Uh, hey, do any of you guys remember the orange bird? Cute little feathery fella with stitches for a head? Probably not many of you since we're all too young and his comeback is sort of recent. But if you've been to Tokyo Disney, you've probably seen him and he was so huge in the 70s and 80s that he basically became a mascot for the entire state of Florida. So where did he go? What could possibly ruin something this cute so completely that he had to lay low for almost half a century? The short answer that is so crazy I couldn't make it up? HOMOPHOBIA! Okay, I know that sounded super fake and clickbaity, but secure your loose articles and hold on to your mouse ears because this story is a ride. When Disney World opened in 1971, a lot of the attractions had corporate sponsors. And during development, the Florida Citrus Commission wanted on that gravy train. After all, they'd been doing some brand licensing for a while. But what part of a theme park do you sponsor when you're a plant? Well, the answer everyone came up with was the Tiki Room. And adjoining juice bar. Perfect! Problem solved! And since the Florida Citrus Commission wanted to use Disney characters in their advertising and Disney did not want that, they even designed a cute little character to go with. The Orange Bird appeared in advertising for both Walt Disney World and the Florida Citrus Commission. He was instantly beloved. I mean, of course he was. Look at him. His wings are leaves. And he perfectly combined oranges and Disney. That's 90% of the Floridian economy right there. The peak of popularity for this fragrant fowl was a record of four songs written by the iconic Sherman Brothers. Since the bird himself couldn't talk, his story was narrated and sung by Anita Bryant. The duo also appeared together in numerous commercials and two educational films, though she did sometimes fly solo. Thank you, thank you. Anita Bryant was a former Miss Oklahoma and singer but it was the orange bird's connection to her that would soon clip his wings. In 1977, Miami passed an anti-discrimination law that outlawed mistreatment on the basis of sexual orientation. This was extremely controversial, and one of the biggest opponents to the new legislation was Anita Bryant. She started a campaign called Save the Children, which fought to overturn the measure and won. She then went nationwide, and this happened. If we were going to go on a crusade across the nation and try to do away with the homosexuals, uh, then we certainly would have done it on June the 8th after one of the most overwhelming victories in the country. Um, uh, but we didn't. We, we, we tried to avoid it and went into a place called Norfolk, Virginia, and were met with protest and uh, um, all kinds of problems. And uh, uh, every... Oh, oh, oh. Security agent, security agent. No, no, let, let him stay. No. Let him stay. Well, at least it's a fruit pie. Huh. Couldn't have said it better myself, my bulbous buddy. Oh, hold up. Can we see that last part again, Jimmy, uh, in slow-mo? <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Anyway, the fact that she was a spokesperson for the Florida Citrus Commission caused them problems. She was so closely tied to the product that gay bars stopped serving screwdrivers, a cocktail which contained orange juice, instead offering an apple juice and vodka drink dubbed the Anita Bryant. Across the nation, supporters of equal rights boycotted Florida orange juice. People could shun her and her crusade by shunning the beverage. <laughs> are bad for business, so when her endorsement contract was up, it was not renewed. But what does any of this have to do with our cute little bird buddy? Well, he appeared in all of her now unrunnable advertisements. But I'm not going to say she was the only thing that took him down. He still got to pose with Miss Florida Citrus as late as 1984, 
know, the way the sponsorship deal between Disney and the Florida Citrus Commission was structured certainly played a role. Because Disney owned the rights to the character, the commission had to pay a fee for every appearance and Disney upped the yearly sponsorship fee when the contract was due for extension after 10 years. At this time, they also paid $139,000 for a second juice bar in Fantasyland. And apparently, the sales just didn't match up. The Florida Citrus Commission represented a bunch of small growers, and that made negotiations difficult. So when the extension ran out in 1987, the sponsorship was not renewed. And for 15 years, the orange bird was caged. But then, in 2002, the character returned in Tokyo Disney. This might be because Japan celebrates a holiday called Orange Day that's like Valentine's Day, but you're supposed to give your sweetheart oranges and orange-colored gifts. It also might be because Japan probably doesn't know about Anita Bryant. Either way, our orange amigo was a huge hit out east, and that set the stage for a gradual comeback stateside. Now you can find him on merch, and his figure has returned home to roost. And personally, I'm glad he has. It's not like he did anything worthy of one of the first public political pieings. I declare him innocent and adorable. It's just a pity he got caught up in it. I mean, how bad do you have to be to drag an adorable cartoon bird down with you? And a juice. And a fruit. And a color. I mean, how hateful do you have to be to ruin the color orange? Oh, right. Thanks for watching.